have now the Clubix, uh, Clubman, sorry, Classic Superbikes Breakfast Run Motorcycles, and uh, it will be their first race of the day. It looks like we're going to have uh, 21 entries. Let's see if all of them take the start. Uh, and uh, Danny Moritz, hey, man needs no introduction on the Suzuki uh, 1100. He uh, will be in the Classic Bike class ahead there of Andre Symes on the R1, the 750 Suzuki of Kurtz. I see the McFadden name in there as well, 369, which will be in the Classic Bike class. And that's Norman McFadden on the R6. Kiana Strode will be in the Clubman's class, of course, with Symes, Kurtz, and uh, a whole gang, Thomas Hendricks, Lowe, Butlerman, Thompson, and Reynard. And uh, we just take a look over here now, down into 11th, Matthew Reynard, that is on the uh, CBR 600. John Kosterman, that's a good name always to come back as well, in the Classic Bikes uh, class. Joining uh, the likes of Moritz and McFadden, Wayne Gress, now, 13th overall, the man will start on the Yamaha R1, ahead there of uh, Fadi Schmitz R6, and then Mario Ferreira in the Boxer Cup, now, of course on the Beamers, uh, the Beamer Boxers, uh, him and Morris, 15th and 16th position, and then running it in the Breakfast Run class is uh, going to be uh, Gerard Frey on the Kawasaki. Suzuki 750 of Sabotka. And then also a pair of Yamahas down there. Rifarth and Rimmer will be uh, taking the start of this particular nine lapper. So, Danny Moritz. Uh in a familiar position, in pole position, out on track with his uh, GSX-R Suzuki. And uh, he's now keeping a eye out for the five second board because uh, the riders go out for their sighting lap. There's no warm up lap, they gotta go straight into racing. Yeah, just a bit of uh, organization going on here. Nick, uh, John Kosterman getting into uh, his rightful position on the grid, which will be 12th. That's uh, the number 81 bike and then uh, Reynard into 11th. Well, it looks like we almost uh, in there just having a bit of a check. There's a little bit further back a few bikes that need just to get into position. Like I say, it's about 21 of them out there. Yeah, so the engines are warming up, the tires are getting cold, uh, so this is not ideal for them. Okay, I suppose it won't make that much of a difference to them, but uh, it's still enough to go along and uh, change what they're, they're feeling on the machine um, the longer that this takes. So this is taking quite a bit of time here on the grid while they're trying to rearrange the uh, grid accordingly. Now they're looking at uh, the number 13 machine to move him into the correct place. Uh, that is uh, Morris on the BMW. And uh, now the signal is given, it looks like it will be good to go. The five second board is being prepared. John Green is getting to ready to run. Engines are beginning to rev. The riders are getting impatient. They want to get started. The five second board is up. And the lights are on. And this race is underway. Whoa, that was a big start there from the 69 machine. So Quartz Mano, he made a jump start for sure there from the outside. And uh, blasts into the lead there. He's about five bike lanes already through into turn one. So I think that's uh, a little bit of a giveaway. Yeah, Danny Moritz was also moving before the line. And then he bogged down at the start over there. And uh, has lost quite a number of places. But uh, don't think he's going to be there for long. He's going to go on that Go Daddy machine. And he's going to fight it back. Here they go into turn two now. Into uh, the uh, quarry corner. All of them getting through that section. You'll see there that uh, one of the BMWs making his way through. Now I don't know if it's going to be Mario uh, Ferreira or uh, Morris. But uh, the number 13. You'll look out for him as well now. Now coming out into that uh, Tigerberg straight. Onto the uh, double apex right-hander at turn four. Saddle van der Maver sweep. Or I call it super saddle sweep. Whichever way you want to put it. It's all about the great man there. Down the back straight we then run. 
and then we'll pick up the positions for you when they come across the line. It's a nine lapper as well. Andrew Sa Andre Symes, Evert Quirtz, Norman McFadden was in that group as well, but a bad start from Donnie Moritz. But there are questions of some jump starts coming into that particular section. Yeah, now towards the line, we then run out of turn five towards the city of Cape Town and Wingfield Motors Bridge. It is going to be the number 69 of Norman McFadden that uh, will be. Uh, Sorry, Quirtz, uh, I'm thinking uh, the other uh, 369s. Uh, it is Quirtz from Strode, from Thomas, from Hendricks. Moritz is in fifth position ahead of McFadden. Yeah, so uh, Danny Moritz not getting the start that he would have liked, but Devon Quirtz uh, is up front uh, despite he blasted off the line. So uh, he's really made uh, good on that start and uh, has now moved well clear there of uh, Keanu Strode there in second position on the ZX6 Kawasaki. So Strode is there in second place and the 55 machine there of Thomas is in third position as uh, they go along turn through, go through turn three and power up towards a Super Sorrel Sweep. And uh, the big question is, is now, is Kurtz going to get penalized for this? Was it actually a jump start? I just saw him move really quickly. So I couldn't actually say whether he jumped it or not, but uh, he's really making the most of it. That's for sure. So now they're going down the back straight. Yeah, comes down Emirates and Wow, he's just blasting past them like they're looking for parking going down the back straight. And uh, has the inside. He's early on the brakes though. He rolls off early on the brakes towards Cape Town Corner. So he's going to lose out. He was in second, but uh, he will lose out to Strode. I think who swoops around the outside, holds on to that second position. And uh, then Moritz, I think, has got a power round down now through the kink, down the main straight. And uh, he should come through. No, he's still in third place. He's still in third place on the brakes then into turn one. Actually, he's in fourth place. So Thomas has moved past Strode for second. That's what happened going into Cape Town corner. And uh, then now they get powering out again out of turn one towards the uh, quarry. Strode is uh, still there in third place. And Donnie Moritz is snapping at his heels. Yeah, fastest lap from uh, Donnie Moritz to 120.001. He took it off of Kurt, who originally took that uh, quickest lap. He crossed the line three seconds ahead of Thomas Strode. Was a tenth of a second off of him, and seven hundredths was Moritz. But he's not going to be there for long, I'll tell you that much. He has two Kawasaki's that he wants to get past over there, Donnie Moritz. And Wesley Hendricks is uh, now behind him. Willem Lowe and uh, Jason Butlerman leading the breakfast run class, though, is a fray in eighth position, 1.1 seconds ahead of Wayne Grace. Well, going down the back straight now. Now it's Thomas that gets past Stroh. Uh, Stro that gets past Thomas uh, on the inside, down the back straight. Thomas is very good around the outside on the brakes, though. But uh, this time around is not going to be enough. And uh, it looks like uh, Ke Keanu Strode is going to retake that second position coming out of the uh, Cape Town corner through the King, coming through to complete another lap. That's second place. Now, Donnie Ritz. He is there in now uh, fifth position, so he's actually lost fourth place. Um, Hendricks has come through as well, so he's losing ground now. So I'm wondering if there's a bit of a power issue going on there with Donnie Moritz's machine. Yeah, there might be uh, there, Nick, because he's now leading the classic bike class at the moment, but he's got those uh, four Clubman's uh, bikes ahead of him, seven hundredths of a second this time around as well between himself and fourth position, and uh, three point nine seconds further back. Of course, the other of the Clubman's ones, the uh, fifth place low, Frey leads the breakfast run class from Symes, Butler, and Sabotka is currently in that 10th position but second in the breakfast run class ahead of Mayer by 1.4 seconds Norman McFadden having an atrocious ride over here in 12th position yeah he also made a terrible start dropped back down through to 12th place and is trying to recover in the meantime the rider on the move is the one that's now currently in third place and that is uh, Hendricks Hendri Wesley Hendricks is now there in third position on the 29 machine and he is now trying to close down uh, Kiana Strode for second place so Managing to worm their way through at the beginning of the lap past Arnie Moritz, a quick move then also uh, past uh, Thomas and uh, now getting out of the kink and out of Cape Town corner looking very, very strong indeed. There's Strode and right then behind him, looking to the inside as they cross the side, he's through, he's already through before the brakes then into turn one and uh, Wesley Hendricks is on a charge. Now the big question is, 
Can he be able to close that three second gap to Evan Kurtz who's up in the lead? Well, a 119.432, fastest lap from Wesley Hendricks as he crossed the line, Nick. If you want to take a look over here, he was a whole second faster than Leighton Thomas and uh, basically more than a second uh, faster than Evan Kurtz at the moment. So let me tell you one thing, that gap is going to disappear before long, definitely as far as he is going, taking a whole second out of the two ahead of him in the last lap. Well, one wonders how this goes along and actually damages the tire wear around the circuit, if it actually does affect these uh, machines. But um, they've got to come out of Super Saro Sweep now down onto the back straight. Yevon Kurtz has got the lead. His head is down on the track and he's got the throttle wide open. But Wesley Hendricks has already pulled the gap down Kurtz. Kurtz is now under attack. And it now looks like Thomas is having a go at him on the inside. So as they go along on break four, Cape Town corner, Thomas is out comf comfortably outbreaks him and uh, then goes along and manages to make the move stick. So uh, our leader comes through the kink now under the bridge and will complete the fifth lap. Uh, Hendrick's second. Donnie Moritz is actually recovering. Donnie Moritz has actually now decided to pin his ears back and he's up there into third. Somebody's off into turn one. Somebody's run wide. So that was Evan Kurtz who'd ran very deep into turn one and then ran wide out onto the rumble strip, luckily not off the track, but he has lost the lead now. Wesley Hendricks has taken the lead. Even with a 2.3 second cushion, uh, Nick, the pressure I think got to him over there as well, having to go wide, maybe going a little bit hot into turn one. They go through the kink now, and he's losing another position, looks like it almost. Danny Moritz went onto the inside into interceptor, turn three, and they go onto the Tigerberg straight now before opening up onto that back straight through four. That was a move that Malcolm Rapson made famous when he was still on the NC30 Honda. Uh, back in the day on the power sport. He used to go along and jump everybody into turn three, but uh, this time around, Moritz did not make that move stick. But now we have a very interesting battle for the lead because uh, Ivan Kurtz has now recovered. He's now trying to have a go there at uh, Hendricks, who's hugging the inside line going through into Cape Town corner. Okay, Hendricks has now got about six bike links then on the rest of the field. He's now powering out of Cape Town, but Danny Moritz, he's looking to pounce. So Donnie Moritz is trying to recover. He's now back into second place. He's in second place. And it looks like Kurtz is dropping down the field. He's lost third place now through to, uh, I think that is uh, Strode that's actually retaken third. And again running wide. Running very wide into turn one. And I think uh, well, I, we'll see that is, I, I think that's Kurtz who's got a serious problem there on the brakes. That's actually, I think, a good point there, Doc. I think what happens is he's just not getting brakes into uh, turn one. You can see how he's trundling around the circuit now. And uh, what happens is I think he took it too much out in those first laps. And uh, I think he's paid a heavy price over here now. And Hendricks leads 1.3 seconds between himself and Moritz. Two and a bit laps left to go. Let's see what Donnie Moritz could do. He's got a fastest first sector time by six tenths of a second over Wesley Hendricks at the moment. Yeah, I wonder if uh, Donnie Moritz is just trying to make this exciting. But here he is now going down the back straight. He's chasing down Wesley Hendricks. He's looking to the outside on the brakes, but Hendricks has got the line covered. Got the number 13 bike coming across the line now. That's uh, William Morris. Uh, second in the uh, boxer class, the uh, pair of BMWs. 19th is Mario Ferreira. Here now comes uh, the battle for the lead. Across the line will be Hendricks first. Then it will be Donnie Moritz. It was 1.3 seconds. Now it's 4 tenths of a second. And it now is two laps left to go. They've left the rest behind. 3.2 seconds back is Thomas Strode. Three seconds back further from him. Yeah, so then our nose to tail as they power up to Orton. Here comes Donnie Moritz. He's looking to the inside. He's got him. He's got him on the brakes and into quarry. It had, to, it had to happen. Moritz has got the lead. Hendricks is doing a great job. He's still there in second place. And it now it looks like Thomas is on his own in third position. Yeah, Moritz took nine tenths out of Wesley Hendricks in the last lap. And a fastest lap of a 118.289 compared to the 119, uh, the 119.3 that, uh, of course, Hendricks put in as well. So that's the top two there. And uh, we'll see Donnie Moritz. It's actually 19.1, uh, excuse me, from uh, Wesley Hendricks. They have left the rest of the field behind over here. Let's go down the uh, list. McFadden has fought his way back up into seventh position. Second, though, in the uh, Classics class. He's ahead of Frey 
Kurtz out of this race looks like it. The number 69 uh, bike uh, is falling down the field uh, vigorously over there. I and think after those brake issues, he's decided he's not going to risk it. And uh, it, well, he's pulled off the circuit, I heard now, so not even going to make it back to the pits. So, uh, yes, Moritz leads. They cross the line. One more lap left to go. He's already on this last lap. Put on an extra 1.1 seconds now from uh, Wesley Hendricks and 18.2 uh, uh, as his fastest lap of the race. Well, that's pretty much over, all over by the shouting. And uh, as he goes through into quarry now for the last time, Hendricks is running a bit wide there as well. This is allowing Thomas to close. Coming on to the uh, last uh, bit of the lap now. So Donna Moritz, who had a bad start. Remember, the man who started on pole position had a bad start. Was all the way down in sixth, fifth, up to fourth, and then came right up back into the lead now. Hendricks did a fine job. Let me tell you one thing. That number 29 machine still holding second place for now as we wait for them to come around and complete this uh, Clubman's Classic Superbikes Breakfast Run Motorcycles Race. Magnificent. Just going a little bit further down. Yellow flags are waving, though in turn five so i just want to see if a bike has probably gone uh, to the beach around that section most likely and uh, they cannot pass in that section uh, unfortunately but uh, now we wait and see here comes Donny moritz number 64 the kawasaki 1100 wins ahead of hendrix 3.3 seconds uh, gap between them when they cross the line then we have uh, Thomas coming across the line now in third position. Leighton Thomas, Kiana Strode uh, came back quite nicely over there, as a matter of fact, but three and a half seconds further back off Thomas. Willem Lowe, well, McFadden, uh, Willem Lowe, I should rather say first, number 86 bike. Remember now the Clubman's class winner is uh, Hendrix on the number 29 uh, machine, the Kawasaki ZX-10R. That is the uh, winner of uh, the Clubman section. McFadden, Norman McFadden, uh, on the Yamaha R6 will be uh, second in the uh, Classics class, but sixth overall. Then we had Symes cross the line in eighth. Frey will be the 11th place finisher. And uh, that will be the winner of uh, the breakfast run class by three seconds over the 58 of uh, Mayer, Conrad Mayer. So Gerard Frey and Conrad Mayer. And then the 56 of Zabotka, third in the class. Yes. Classics is uh, going to just take a look. Uh, Wayne Gress, uh, the number, 90, uh, number 95, Yamaha R1, was third in class. And then uh, that's 12th overall. But 16th overall, John Kosterman uh, finished uh, in the fourth place in the classic bike class. Always great to see the classic bikes uh, join uh, here as well. Some of the older machines. And uh, John Kosterman, he was there uh, mixing it with Shandon Thompson and Michael Reifoff. Uh, on the two Yamahas over there that uh, that 1100 uh, Suzuki made his way between. So Mario Ferreira wins the Boxer Cup though. Also a classic bike run, but uh, he's king of the Beamers uh, as far as things are concerned today with uh, William Morris uh, finishing in 19th. Quirtz and Rimmer out of the race, unfortunately.